Cause you are worthy We lift our hands to say thank you Good day to each and every one of you. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful start of a glorious and warm week here uh, in uh, the great city and region of Savannah and across the nation. This is Dr. George D. III bringing you another Thoughtful Tuesday. As you take this time to share uh, along all social media, uh, venues and platforms allow them to know uh, that we're here uh, to give you um, a thoughtful, interesting uh, message, uh, a nugget to help you coast along the rest of the week, especially in times like these. Uh, uh, we need to be thoughtful in the midst of eventful experiences. So as we always do, and again, we are grateful for all of you that share um, in your prayer requests. We do see them. We are seeing them. You've been sending them in from all um, across the world, and we acknowledge those, and we've been praying uh, for you and every situation that you've shared, and we're thankful for the uh, praise reports that we're receiving. But this is um, our midweek oh, virtual worship experience uh, from St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress. As always, we begin to start off our Thoughtful Tuesdays with a word of prayer, and so we want to share uh, that prayer with each of you, and if you are listening and tuning in, and this is your first time, um, you're able uh, to inbox us uh, right here at St. John Baptist, the Mighty Fortress, here on Facebook, um, as well um, as um, our other social media accounts. Uh, that we may continue to pray with you and pray for you along with our prayer ministry. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you and bless you that as this day, day has now in preparing to come to an end and as this week, Lord, has begun in all of our lives, we ask that you will give us calmness um, and a sense of serenity in the midst of chaos and unexpected events. Um, Lord, we know that we can't do this by ourselves, but we need a strength and a power that comes from above and beyond uh, that which we can tap to here on earth. So I ask that you give, Lord, what we need, uh, those that are tuning in and those that shall see and listen, um, to be able um, to be um, and to have um, a sense of awareness as well as a sense of sensitivity, not only in our own lives, but the lives of those that are around us. Um, because in times such as these, there's so many people that are, uh, that are on edge, um, that are in a continuous um, cycle of chaos in their lives. Um, they don't know which way to go. So bless us that uh, through uh, this virtual worship experience and we'll receive what we need to help others along the way and we will continuously always give you the glory in the midst of it all because we know that our strength comes from you for not by power nor by might but by my spirit uh, says the Lord so it's done with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen, and Amen Again, we are now sharing the Thoughtful Tuesday we're going to be dealing with a two-part series um, for this week and next week um, uh, seeing of uh, what you cannot see, uh, seeing what cannot be seen. Um, we're sharing um, out of the book of Numbers. Uh, the scripture says, the Lord said to Moses, let's read it together, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites from each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. Numbers 13, one through three. I want to begin to share with you um, a sense of vision um, that we definitely, uh, in what's going on around us, need to envision that which we currently do not see physically. Um, and who better uh, that in growing up um, we were introduced um, to the life and to the writings of uh, the late Helen Keller and um, the person who uh, showed her and shared with her how to communicate to the world, Anne Sullivan. Uh, Helen Keller uh, shared these words, vision is the art of seeing 
what is invisible to others. I'll say that again. Vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Uh, Helen Keller continued to ask the question. She says, what would be worse? Somebody asked her than being born blind. They asked her that question. What would be worse, uh, Miss Keller, than being born blind? And her response to some may have been trite, but it's true. Helen Keller responded to have sight without vision. Oh, and how many of us uh, that physically we can see um, what is in front of us, uh, but spiritually we cannot see what's beyond us. And as we go forth for um, our community locally, for our society uh, nationally, um, and for our world globally, uh, that we must push ourselves and ask and, and receive elevation to see beyond what is in front of us. Because if we focus, if you focus all that you have, your physicality and your spirituality on what you see, you will go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. We believe in vision. Vision is something that is spiritual. Vision is something that you must be in tune with yourself and the Creator, um, that you will be able to see the forest in the midst of all the trees. How do we do this? Um, for practicality purposes, and as we deal with this series for this week and next week, um, let us deal and share with uh, the life of Moses. Um, let us continue in the book of Numbers. I'm going to share with you this passage of scripture on this Thoughtful Tuesday. It says, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, Moses said these words. He says, go up through the, the Gav and on into the hill country. Verse 18, he says, see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it kind? Is it good? Is it bad? Um, what are the towns? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Um, is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring some of the fruit of the land back uh, for it was ripe. Uh, for the season uh, for grapes. And that's Numbers 13, 17 through 20. So the things that they were asking um, uh, for the group of spies that uh, Moses and um, the nation of Israel had sent before them to go into the promised land was very interesting. Um, that even though he was asking for specifics, um, they had to see beyond what they saw. You know, and, and it's going to make sense after, as we go through this. Um, and even as people ask questions uh, about, well, how are you doing through the pandemic? Um, where do you see um, ourselves or your family or where you work or where you go to church uh, beyond this? How are things uh, happening around you? Uh, what are, you know, the, 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 the to-go question now, what are your, the numbers around you? Uh, um, and if uh, people are very personal, are you vaccinated, unvaccinated? I mean, all of these questions that were being asked, um, but it's really, um, the questions are really not the question. It is really where do we see ourselves as a people? And that's what people are asking you, and that's what even you need to begin to think of yourselves. Where do we see ourselves beyond where we are? Um, have you been able to even see yourself beyond this? Um, because it's taxing, um, not only physically. COVID fatigue is real, my brothers and sisters. Whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, uh, whether you have believed in masks, unmasked, whether you were quarantined or you were free willy. Um, that at the end of the day, our world is not the way it was um, two to three years ago. We are living in different times, whether we desire to accept that or not. Uh, times are different. People are different. The way in which we relate to each other is different. Um, but how do we begin to envision ourselves and as humanity beyond where we are? Um, as we uh, share uh, this and an adaptation from uh, studies that we've shared with the Mighty Fortress. Um, 
there when we deal with vision and we were dealing with it on a spiritual scope um, that when you deal with um, various words and as we just do um, a little arithmetic um, with the English language. Now vision minus action simply equals dream. And is that where many of us are, you know, um, in uh, this season, in 2021, um, that is now we are preparing to approach the fall um, as we're dealing with wildfires uh, on uh, one end of our nation and we're dealing with um, an increase of a Delta variant on the other end of the nation. And that in between is sandwiched uh, uh, violence of a nature um, that is unheard of um, in times like these where bullets are hitting uh, individuals regardless of race, creed, color, nationality, or orientation. Um, is our vision uh, minus action where we're just, uh, we're in a dream of uh, this thing of what could be a, a fantasy mode? Or are we in action minus vision, which is wasted time that uh, many of us are scurrying about and we're busy, um, but we're not uh, getting anything accomplished? Or um, do we begin to now uh, add uh, these words together that vision plus action equals change? And that is where we want to move ourselves towards. All of us have been at stages of dreams, of wasted energy um, and time to a place where we begin to enact uh, and enable change. Let us continue in Numbers. Verse 23 says, when they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Listen to this. Two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. The place which was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of the uh, 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. Now, as they began to accomplish that which was um, asked of them, it is very interesting that you can have a group of individuals looking and experiencing the same moment in time, the same situation, but you have five people can come back with five different interpretations of what they all had seen and experienced together. And that's very important. And in um, situations where we receive information uh, that is so important um, for you to be able now uh, to be spiritual, to discern um, correct information for information that is false. And as they began to come back and to share, um, and they did as they requested, it is so important to understand um, that unless you are a person that can see um, uh, the forest because of the trees, or you have to be able to say to yourself, there's too many trees that I can't even see where in the, the forest is, to thine own self be true. And if we are so unindated uh, with emotions that we cannot differentiate, or interpret, we need to be honest with ourselves because many times we expound and we share um, uh, in a way that we're feeling that we're informative, but we're only being opinionated. And there is a difference. Um, all of us have and will have, you know, um, opinions because opinions are like orifices in our body. Everybody has one, whether you got one or 10 and I'm not counting in the human anatomy, sorry. So, you know, as we go forth in this, is this an opinion or is this information? Information is what can be proven to be factual. Let us go on. This is everybody. Um, the next point I want to share that uh, in seeing what cannot be seen, um, uh, there is an old saying that says, everybody wants to be a diamond, but very few are willing to get cut. Yeah, we want to shine, we want to be glamour. We want to be the real 
housewives or house husbands of Atlanta or Savannah. But in order to be real, in order to be relevant, in order to be able to have a sense of brilliancy as diamonds, uh, when they find them, they gotta get cut. The scripture continues by saying, they gave Moses this account. It says, we went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit, they had proof of it. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. And so now you have um, a situation where you have fact and opinion. Uh, they, were be a they were able to bring back and they, as Moses stated, they said, yes, it is a, a land that is productive and the produce is wonderful and great and awesome. But they said, look at here. He says, but the people, as we begin to close this Thoughtful Tuesday, watch out for the butts in life. Watch out for your butt and the butts of others. Because butts, sooner or later, off will butt up against you, okay? They started off with fact, and they moved from fact to opinion. They didn't bring any of the people back with them so no one could judge of what they were able to see. And so they had to take the words of those in that particular group, which was the majority, who said the people, they live there, are powerful. The cities are fortified and very large. We would not know that unless we were able to all see it and experience it ourselves. When individuals give you a but that yes, we, we know, we're dealing in a day and time, we're talking about keep the faith, follow the science, follow this, follow that, conservative, liberal, things of that nature, all of it has a but. Learn how to remove the butts in your life to get to where you need to be to make a decision that is informed, relative, and productive for you and your family. We sit here all the time, and it is a part of our life and the livelihood of the ministry of the Mighty Fortress. These words ring true. Look beyond your disabilities and see possibilities. In life, you will always see what's wrong. You will always see what's the worst, the baddest, the whatever. But all of those disabilities, what is going on in our lives right now? Can you see what is possible? And that's what we ask, and no one can answer that but you. I cannot make you, no one can make you, even in your household, um, those that you're in a relationship with. And if you are having a difficult time, I want you to pray and, and take some time to meditate, and, and maybe you need to fast uh, some, but get to a place where you can see the positive possibilities. And only then when you're able to see the possibilities, you can make that which is possible, reliable. As long as the disabilities that you see, disabilities will what? Disable you. But if you're able to see that which can be probable and hopeful, that can enable you to look beyond and what you see, you can make what is real. Short word, a quick word, but this is a very powerful word and a relevant word to what is going on. We're not here to take sides. We're simply here um, to help, which is going to help our community and our world take over. And with that being stated, um, can you, will you see what cannot be seen? And if you desire that kind of help, uh, the path that we take um, is a path of becoming a part of this spiritual community of faith. 
back in and repeat these words with us. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. I'm asking you today to become the head of my life. Please forgive me from all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me, and three days later you were raised from the grave. And because I believe, today I am saved. Now, Lord, please fill me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Now, let's see. You need vision for this. The sights and sounds of St. John, the Mighty Fortress. Because when you realize that he has the whole world in the palm of his hands for real, you'll learn how to stop worshiping creation and start worshiping the Creator. Do I have any witnesses tonight? That every move I make, every breath that I take, amen, that I always see his glory. Amen, that when I get up in the morning and look at myself, I'm looking at his glory. Why? Because the word says that I am created in his imago dei. Amen, that is Latin for being created in the image and likeness of God. So therefore, you can't treat me just any kind of way because I am the walking, talking image of God. Hallelujah tonight. Bless the name of the Lord. And that's why I love the Lord so. Amen. That when he created me, he created me just like himself. So therefore, I don't have to... Ah, blessings to you. Thank you for being able to see what cannot be seen. And as we continue... Um, in our relationship, a kinship and relationship uh, here at the Mighty Fortress. Um, we share in our worship and we thank you for your constancy and your consistency um, through your giving, um, through the time, talent, and the tithe, that which we call the 3T ministry here at the Mighty Fortress. There are several ways to give to support the ministries of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, your time, talent, and tithe. We've made virtual giving so easy. Just text St. John SAV to 73256 and follow the prompts. That's St. John SAV 73256 and follow the prompts. Or you can call the number right on your screen to speak to someone and give your credit card information. 912-844-1872. That's 912-844-1872. Or feel free to mail in your cash, donations, and tithes to St. John Baptist Church, The Mighty Fortress, 2415 East Duran Avenue, Savannah, Georgia, 31406. And to give your time and talent or to find out more information on everything going on at St. John the Mighty Fortress, including our virtual worship experiences, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Periscope. Or go to stjohnsavannah.org. So as we go forth uh, in this series, we look forward to seeing you uh, on next Tuesday. And again, um, it's, it's tight, but it's right. This is a thought. Um, that will have you thinking throughout the week um, and helping other people think. Many times it's not about convincing people about your position, but it's just simply helping them see beyond what they can see physically. And when you're able to do that, we're able uh, to have um, a sense of conversation with integrity. So please share with others, continuously follow us. I'm here every day for Mighty Fortress Moments. As Brother McDuffie says, that's the medicine in the message. Uh, just a little uh, bit to get you along life's way. Continuously follow us every Sunday morning for our virtual worship experience here uh, for Morning Matter. And yes, uh, we're still rolling in and going strong um, at a new time for our worship on Sundays in-person worship in your car, social distance, here on the wonderful campus of St. John, the Mighty Fortress, 2415 East Darren Avenue, the soul of Savannah, every Sunday now at 9 a.m. promptly. Uh, from 9 to 10 a.m., come as you are in the family car and bring every what you need and let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And again, we thank you and continue to listen on iHeartRadio, WSOK 99.7, uh, the Sound of Savannah, the traditions worship experience of St. John the Mighty Fortress. And again, uh, our goal this week is to help you see uh, what your physical eyes cannot be seen. And I promise you, you can make the possibilities realities. Until we meet again, all is well. Oh, we are today because
you are worthy. We lift our hands to say thank you.